Hello once again. Some of you have asked about uh, using this online ephemeris calculator because it is a bit confusing. You're supposed to have the orbital elements and then put them in and it gives you a position. Uh, this is the one online, online source that I found that actually seems to do this rather well, but it can be a bit confusing. So I found this website. It's called Frosty Drew Observatory. I'm going to go at this uh, menu up here where it says tools. And there are a variety of tools, obviously, on this particular website. Pretty neat. Gives you some astronomical calculations. But we're interested in the one down here called Calculating Ephemerides. Ephemerides is the plural of the singular word ephemeris. And an ephemeris is this plot, this listing of the positions of an object. What we're most interested in is the ephemeris that is going to give us the right ascension and declination of this object for, let's say, five-day intervals. So here are the values you're supposed to put in. Um, this first one, T, the time, the epoch, that is the time for which the coordinates are correct. Now, the sky wobbles. It precesses because the Earth's axis is wobbling. Typically, we can leave this at J2000.0. That is the most recent epoch. You might find some orbital elements that are of the current year epoch. In other words, maybe 2016. But, but depending on what elements you find, depending on how you get those orbital elements, you have to put the correct epoch in there because the, the sky does change a little bit there. The semi-major axis is in astronomical units. That is the size of the orbit, and that should be given as one of the six orbital elements. The eccentricity is a shape. It's a, zero, a number between 0 and 1 for ellipses. This particular example object here has an eccentricity of 0 0.09. It's a fairly circular orbit. The inclination is pretty self-explanatory. That's how much the orbit is tilted out of the plane of the ecliptic. Um, Earth's orbit has an uh, uh, inclination of 0, of course, because that's the reference plane of the solar system. Now, the longitude of the ascending node, since this orbit is tilted, we need to say in which direction it's tilted. That is always going to be an angle between 0 and 360 degrees. That should be listed. The longitude of the perihelion is how far around the near point of the orbit is. You see, we have to orient this orbit in space to get it correct. Um, now, this longitude of perihelion, which is given as a lowercase Greek letter omega, you see it right there, uh, sometimes it's called the argument of the perihelion. Those two terms are interchangeable. Uh, depending on where you get your elements, uh, it could be one or the other. This last one is kind of strange. It's the longitude of epoch. In other words, for this year, for 2000, for the year 2000 up there, where is the object around in its orbit? Now, that number changes. Uh, you might see some elements that have uh, the uh, mean anomaly for a particular day. Uh, I'm doing this particular video at, um, uh, on October 21st. So some orbital elements give you the position of the object on a particular day. This right here, this entry, is supposed to be uh, the longitude of the object, how many degrees around in the orbit the object was at this date, at 2000. So it's going to require a little bit of uh, searching to figure out exactly what you want, which elements you want. I went to this Wikipedia page, which is somewhat useful here, and you can see over here for uh, the planets, here are the orbital elements that are used. For comets, we use the time of perihelion passage. That's what that T0 is. Uh, on what date will a comet be closest to the sun? Now, for asteroids, we use these six orbital elements. And here's a little link. It tells you what the mean anomaly is and where to find it. So uh, the website that I showed you a little bit earlier before, oh, by the way, once again, this is just the Wikipedia page. Uh, and if you search on Wikipedia for orbital elements, it'll take you to this page. Lots of wonderful definitions of how these elements work. But back to this page here, if you entered all of these objects, um, and I would uncheck a lot of these things, uh, the uh, heliocentric Cartesian coordinate, uh, the geocentric coordinates, the heliocentric coordinates, uh, the position of the object in its orbit, um, because all we're really interested in is the date and the right ascension and declination. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it for today. It defaults to October 21st because that's the day today. And I want the interval to be 
uh, three days. It says up here how you can enter these things. You can either do it in hours or days. If you just have a number, it'll do it in days. Let's get the ephemeris and see what the answer is. Well, there you go. With those orbital elements uh, on uh, October 21st at 10.39 in the morning, that's what time it is right now, uh, the right ascension is 0 hours 8 minutes, and the declination is minus 3 degrees. Notice that the right ascension is given not only in hours and minutes, but also in degrees. Let's see, every hour of right ascension is 15 degrees of angle, so it'll give you either one, depending on what you want. It'll also give you the declination in hours, minutes, and seconds, or in fractional degrees. This radius is how far away the object is currently from the sun. Um, there you go, that should help. Um, try to make some progress in figuring out how to get this ephemeris working, because as I say, the first step of all this orbital element orbit determination business is to have the orbital elements and then prepare a ephemeris to, uh, to predict the future positions. The other way that we're going to get to soon, uh, that's a little bit more complicated, is when you guys come up with the positions, hopefully on your images, and then you go the other way to calculate the orbital elements. And that is a little bit more involved. We'll get to that later.